In this example, we're going to look at the goodness of fit of the normal distribution, where we need to estimate parameters. The example we have here is the Weiss measurement of a sample of 100 members of a slimming group was taken at the beginning of their weight loss journey. We have some group data of Weiss measurements in inches and their frequencies. The question is asking us directly to estimate the mean and standard deviation of the population from which these observations were taken and it's given us some indication of how to do that for the first and last group. And then use a chi-squared distribution at the 1% level of significance to test the adequacy of the normal distribution as a model for these data. As with any hypothesis test we need to look first at the seven steps. Our hypotheses, the tail, the significance level, calculating the expected value so we can get the test statistic, the critical value, compare these and conclude. So starting with our hypotheses. Our null hypothesis is always that nothing has changed, nothing is different, everything has stayed the same. So for this example, it's going to agree with what they're stating that the normal distribution does provide an adequate model for the waist measurements of members of a slimming group. Our H1 is therefore the alternative to that, and that is that the normal distribution does not provide an adequate model for the waist measurements of the members of the slimming well group. Next, we need to look at the tail and the significance level. These don't necessarily give us marks, but they help us later on in the question. A chi-squared test is always one-tailed, and we always look at the upper value. And for this question, we're being asked to use a 1% level of significance. So I'm just going to note that down for future reference. Next, we need to be looking at finding our test statistic, and to do that, we first of all need expected values. Now, in this question, we were specifically asked up here to estimate the mean and standard deviation. It doesn't have to tell us that, and we should know when we get to this point that we haven't been given a mu or a sigma squared, and therefore we need to estimate them before we can work out any probabilities. Because mu is unknown, we must estimate using x bar. Because sigma is unknown, we must estimate using s. And if I input this data into my calculator, bearing in mind um, they told me up here in brackets, for these calculations you should assume that the first and last classes have the same width as other classes. I'm going to assume this one here at the beginning is 25 to 27, and this one here is 40 to 42. They're both too wide, the same as previous classes. So by putting that data into my calculator, I end up with a normal distribution with a mean x bar of 34.91 and a standard deviation or a variance, should I say, of 3.777 and I've squared that to make it my variance. So those are the estimations I'm going to be using for my normal distribution. So I'm then going to input that data into my calculator to get the values of p. Now, with this question, which is unlike many that we've done before, we're going to need to use the continuity correction. Our first group is anything less than or equal to 27. Then our next group is 28 up to and including 30. That means that any value in between 27 or 28 will have to be rounded down or up into the appropriate category. So I need to consider for my upper bound of the first group every value or the maximum value that can be rounded down to 27. That is 27.4 and then 9 recurring. So when you're inputting the values for your lower and your upper bound you need to be using 27.4 and then input in your mean and standard deviation. Then for the second category, I've got to use everything that rounds up to 28, so that's 27.5 is my lower bound, 
and then everything that rounds down to 30 will be 30.4999999999 etc. Putting those in your calculator you should get these probabilities. Uh, my warning is about the continuity correction there. So these are the p-values that you should be getting using those continuity corrections on your calculator. And to get my expected values, I'm going to multiply those probabilities by the total frequency, which they've kindly told me is 100. So I'm going to multiply each of those by 100. Again, I end up with a warning sign because my e-value for the first category is less than 5. And we cannot use the chi-squared goodness of fit test if E is less than 5. So we're going to have to combine categories. So the easy thing for me to do here is just to combine less than 27 with 28 to 30 and make a less than 30 category. So I'm going to do that by combining these two frequencies to make 14. Combining these two probabilities here to make 0 0.121. And combining these E values here to give me 12.105. Now I've got my E values, I can use them to calculate my test statistic. So again, I've just neatened up the table here and I'm going to calculate R minus E, so 14 take away 12.105. I'm going to do that for each of the O and E pairs. And then I'm going to square that and divide it again by E. And that will give me my five contributions to the test statistic. The test statistic is the sum of R minus E all squared over E. And if we add up those five values, you should get 1.3416. That is my test statistic. Next, I need to be looking at my critical value. So just flicking back to this screen here, obviously this is my original table with six categories, but once I've combined categories down here, I've actually only got one, two, three, four, five possible categories for X. So when working out my degrees of freedom, my number of categories will be five. I always subtract one for degrees of freedom. Then I will subtract a second one because I had to estimate the mean and a third one because I had to estimate the standard deviation. So my number of categories was five, take away one. Then I've took away a second one here because I had to estimate the mean and a third one because I also had to estimate the standard deviation. For these questions of the normal distribution, sometimes you will have to estimate both. Sometimes it will be just the mean, other times it will be just the standard deviation. That gives me a degrees of freedom of 2, so I'm going to look on table 6, the percentage points of the chi-squared distribution, at degrees of freedom 2. Remembering point 3 in my hypothesis test is the significance level. For this question we were told a 1% significance level, so 100 take away 1 is 99, so I'm going to look down the 0.99 category, and where that overlaps, up here, is 9.210, so that will be my critical value. Step 6 is to compare that test statistic with the critical value. Here is my chi-squared distribution. If I put my critical value of 9.210 on there, and then between 0 and that lies my test statistic of 1.3461. It's in the big fat belly of the distribution and the rule for the conclusion is that we accept H0 in the belly and putting that in the context of the original hypotheses we can say there is significant evidence to suggest that the normal distribution provides an adequate model for the waste measurements of the members of the Slimming World group at the beginning of their weight loss journey.